everybody. It's, um, what is it? It is February 26th. Um, it's a little afternoon. I am unboxing things and handling stuff before I head off to um, Seattle for AWP. Got some really cool stuff in from Brilliance Audio. Brilliance has been doing these physical editions of the ACX um, books that I've been, uh, audio books that I've been uploading. I think it's really cool. They did one for the Walk Up Nameless Ridge. This is a short story. It's probably my favorite of my short stories. Um, and uh, the audio edition is really cool and it's really neat to see in physical. Um, Dust, the audio book, has been out for uh, just a little bit, I think, like uh, maybe a month. Um, uh, and they've done a physical edition of that. Um, really inexpensive, too. $19.99 for, the, for 11 compact discs. I'm not sure how that works out. I remember paying 20 bucks for one audio CD of, uh, for music back when, back when you still did that. This one, this is really cool. This is the Peace in Amber audiobook. What's neat about this, I, I've been too scared to listen to this, by the way. Um, Amber told me last night that we have our first review up on Audible, and I didn't even want to know. I didn't want her to read it to me or tell me what it was. But um, they, they flew us up to New York, and uh, you can see it's performed by me and Amber. I read um, my autobiographical parts, and Amber did Montana Wildhack's parts. Um, and that was really cool, learning how to... Um, Paul Rubin directed this and, and taught us how to... Um, you know, you're like listening to, you're, you're reading it and he'll say, okay, do that part again. And that just breaks into your, uh, headset. And then next thing you know, you're listening to yourself, read a few lines before the part you needed to fix. And you just pick up right where that left off. It was kind of a, um, he warned us, you know, that it would be, um, a learning curve to figure out how to do that. <clears throat> that was a lot of fun. Okay. So this, I opened, um, and try to record it on YouTube, and YouTube swallowed the video, so you're not going to get all my like uh, squealing like a little kid on Christmas morning. But this was one of the neatest packages yet. It came wrapped in brown paper with uh, writing on it that said um, "Good and Supply," and it was wrapped. It was tied like a bow with this uh, USB cable straight out of the book when you know Scotty does that. Uh, for jewels and inside um, this is like a, a thermos thing but I don't I don't know if this is for food or for taking dirt samples um, it's got the nice um, <clears throat> hazard symbol oh let me show you the pictures so this is done for a book club discussion and here are the awesome members of the book club and here's um, some of the items they brought with them a thermos you can see the arm of this cleaning suit, a multi-tool, magnifying glasses, um, and you can, and these uh, banner things hanging up here, I now have, I can like hang, string this up in my room and don't think I'm not going to. Um, <clears throat> for food, they cook things that they thought would be in the silo. <clears throat> if I would have known this was going on, I probably would have got in my car and made it to this thing. I don't, I don't even know what country they were in, but uh, I would have, I would have tried to be there. So you can see some more of the cool stuff they had. This is what the package looked like when I got it. It was um, wrapped. You can see the USB bows there. <clears throat> um, everyone's IDs for the silo. So, Wendy, y'all need to get together. Y'all need to do a book club together. So inside this box, my very own. Um, it's level 34. I'm a member of IT. And that's why I look so stern there. I think I'm going to send someone to clean. Um, I don't know if that's my real fingerprint or not. Um, so I've got my own pass. Check this out. This is cleaning supplies. There's step one. Step two, a piece of wool. Got the film protector for step three. How cool is that? And heat tape. I'm hoping of the good variety. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, there was a lot of squealing involved when I opened this. 
Uh, I'm glad YouTube um, destroyed all evidence of that. Uh, <clears throat> now, here's what I am dying to share. Oh, also in there, cookies. Ha <laughs> ha. These are, that's going to go on the plane with me tonight. So, um, I, I just went to the Savannah Book Festival. Was it uh, not this last weekend, but the weekend before that, I believe? Um, and uh, the coolest thing I got to do there was <clears throat> the festival was a lot of fun. I had a really good time. I gave a couple of talks and uh, met a lot of awesome readers. But I've also met some awesome writers. Um, the kids of the DEET program. This is a uh, Savannah after school program for young writers. These are middle school kids. And you know, I had that blog post recently about how increasing the, the overall pie for uh, authors and books in general means we have to get kids to fall in love with reading and writing at a young age. That's what the DEEP program is doing. They um, get these kids in who are interested in, in writing and uh, they let them hone their ability and uh, hone their skills and then they publish their works in these anthologies. Um, <clears throat> I was waiting to give my talk and I picked up one of the anthologies and I was blown away. I had no idea how old these kids were. I thought maybe they were high school kids. And even then I would have been really impressed. I found out they were 9, 10, 11 years old and I was blown away. So this has been my, um, all my reading lately has been uh, in these anthologies and I thought I would share a few of these just, um, they're too good not to. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Kendria Jones. It's really neat that they have their pictures and a little bio here and then their um, their poems. So the, this first poem I'm going to read is called The Runaway Kids. A thousand shoes hanging on a tree. They belong to the runaway kids. The poor, the hurt, the shamed and rich. Kids come here to forget all their troubles. They want to be free. They take off their shoes and run. The rich girl leaves her shoes because they don't define her. People always look at what you have to see who you are. The boy leaves his shoes because he knows he can fly without those Jordans. He takes off his shoes, ties them, as he jumps to hang them on the tree and leaps six feet in the air. He never knew he could fly that high. I love that point. It reminds me of a song by David Wilcox uh, about this woman in this relationship, she goes to Africa and, and finds herself and running from a hyena, she jumps and um, she's hanging from this, uh, low, the lowest branch of this tree and her feet are like four feet off the ground and, and this realization that she can jump that high uh, liberates her when she goes back to her, her boyfriend who only cares about his Camaro. It's a, it's a wonderful song, one of my favorite folk songs uh, of all time. Um, next, uh, this is another poem about shoes. Uh, I <clears throat> Um, I recorded myself reading this earlier and uh, I had to um, redo it because uh, it, <clears throat> I don't know why I have a re reaction to this poem, but uh, I feel fine now, so I'll be able to get through it. This is from Teresia Banks. Um, you see this beautiful young girl and her little bio and then her very short but so sweet poem. It's called My Shoe Is Me. My shoe is rough and worn like a building that is so old it starts to slowly come crumbling down, piece by piece, pebble by pebble. But when I dance in them, they are bright and shiny and new. Just like my life, it is sometimes rough, like a driveway that is covered with pebbles. I gracefully dance through it, and it suddenly becomes brand new. I try my best to always flow like a gallant stream, and be free to everything, moving myself through life. I uh, that is such a, a poem about, I don't know, it's, it's so uh, life-affirming. And the idea that the, the shoes are, are defined by what she does while wearing them is, is beautiful to me. That, um, you know, there's, it's all about how you frame things and how you look at them. Um, yeah, I mean, it starts that her shoe is rough and worn. And in the end, it's um, her dancing and, and how new and beautiful the shoes are. And in, in a very, in a very, just a handful of lines, just conveys a whole lot of emotion. Um, Yusuf MacArthur is the poet laureate of the group. I think you know this is something they rotate. I'm not sure if he 
if it currently is, this is the fall of 2013 anthology. Um, uh, <clears throat> I think it helps to think about the size of Yusuf. Yusuf is a tiny child. Um, it, when I was, I remember being in school, my backpack felt like, I mean, these massive books they would make us carry, and we would have to have several periods at a time. And I remember thinking, like, they were trying to kill me with uh, the weight of these bags. And Amber, who was also a small child, had um, a bag with wheels on it in order to get her books around when she was uh, in middle school and high school. Um, <clears throat> Yusuf wrote a poem about his book bag, and I, I think it's I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, the title of the poem is The Weight of on my shoulders is red. And I think that, I just love this title. So this is by Yusuf MacArthur. The poem is, The weight on my shoulders is red. Blood is the color of Alabama's jerseys. Darker than a flamingo, like a high person's eye after doing cocaine. As maroon as an apple fresh off the tree, the color lipstick Victoria's Secret wears. The color of my book bag may be darker it's the color of the weight on my shoulders. The weight on my shoulders comes from the maroon stained holes strapped to me and filled with pieces of paper, wrinkled like an old person's face with black letters. This bag makes me feel as tired as a bear during winter when I carry it, sagging with paper, books, and pencils. I feel like there is a 10-ton elephant on my back just hanging, an elephant meandering in the desert. Hot and tired, ready to collapse, I am dragging from school all the way home. Sounding like a snake slithering through the leaves, feeling like a teacher after a long day of stubborn students. I feel as lazy as a sloth on a rainy, gloomy Sunday afternoon. My bag carries all of the irritating things God could think of, like sinning on Sunday during or right after church. It carries all of the things that hold me down in the world. I feel you, Yusuf. Um, anyway, uh, maybe I'll share some more of these uh, in a later video. I could go on and, and, and read these forever. Um, uh, so, uh, man, a lot of stuff to unbox. Got more stuff I, I could share, like uh, this awesome book that was sent to me that is has Orion's uh, belt on it and is burned and charred and there are parts missing and this is a this is just a brilliant little um, one-of-a-kind work of art this got me thinking about things that we could do with books to make them exciting and, and singular and really um, precious things and I, I really thank the person uh, who sent me this um, I might uh, do more about this later but uh, anyway uh, thank you guys for all of the love and thank you uh, to all the um, kids at the deep program who came out and for sharing your work with the world and thanks to the um, university students who volunteer with them and the library for putting this program together you guys do an amazing job really honored to um, that you uh, came out and, and had me speak at your library. So, uh, okay, that's it. Uh, off on a jet plane again, and uh, until next time, see ya.